Hello and welcome. Thanks for visiting, and I'm pleased that you could join with me today for another TV Box Stop Review. Today I have the review of a TV box that's different. It combines both modern and conventional forms of streaming, and at the same time utilize the latest hardware and software, with an attractive design and connecting ports to meet your demands. This box is the MiCool KI Pro, Android 7.14K Hybrid TV Box. After the break, I'll do a full review with benchmarks and we will see how well the KI Pro performs, so stay tuned, I'll be back in a moment. The summer sales continues, and get ready to rock the summer sales with easy breezy deals and cool treats for new buyers. Play the catch a coconut game for a chance to win Xiaomi smartphones, or join the coupon summer party and get huge discounts of up to 20% across all categories. So to take advantage of these sizzling pre-orders and flash discounts, go to gearbest.com, see the links in the description area. Welcome back, and as I begin, let's take a look at the package. What we have here, is this white box that the KI Pro comes in, it is well labeled, with features about the box on the top and sides. Below the box, it shows that the KI Pro runs on a new version of Android operating system, which is Android 7.1. It runes on a quad-core Cortex-A53 CPU, running up to 2.0 GHz. The CPU model will be revealed in the review. This model comes with 2 GB of DDR4 RAM, and 16 GB of internal storage. There is also a 4 GB 32 GB model if you so desire. It has support for 4K video playback at 60 frames per second with HEVC and VP90 coding, and it has support for HDR10 and HLG. And the last thing it shows, is that you have Ethernet LAN speeds of up to 1000 megabits per second. So I'll now unpack the contents of the box. In the box, you have the KI Pro unit itself. You get an infrared remote, an HDMI cable, a 5 volts 2 amps DC power adapter, and a user's guide. Let's examine the ports on the box. The box is made of plastic and you have a number of ports. It comes with one DVB-T2 connector, this is for picking up digital cable channels using a special digital antenna. Next to that you have a DVB-S2, this can be used to receive digital transmission through cable connection, and transmission from conventional antenna. You also have your regular ports which include, one HDMI port, one RJ45 Ethernet LAN port, one composite video port, an optical audio port, and a DC power input. To the side, you have four USB 2.0 ports, and a micro SD card slot. To the top, you have an attractive power LED light power button. And at the bottom, you have lots of ventilation holes. The box comes with this nice infrared remote which controls all the core functions of the box. And I always recommend purchasing a Bluetooth Air mouse or mini keyboard with touchpad features, for easier and more advanced navigation of this box. So I'll now take a minute to connect this box to my TV. Then continue with the rest of the review. So I've successfully connected the box and I'm ready to go. As I power up the box, it starts with the same me cool startup animation and logo, and then you're presented with this launcher. The launcher is simple and easy to use, and it has the same reference design usually used in the me cool line of TV boxes. 
The launcher doesn't come with a navigation bar at the bottom, a feature that comes in very handy when multitasking with a Bluetooth Air mouse or touchpad keyboard. Another usual feature of this launcher is the ability to add and remove shortcuts to the home screen. To add a shortcut, simply click on the plus icon, and click on the app you would like to add. To remove any shortcut, you have to use the menu button on the remote control. Special thanks goes out to one of my subscribers for figuring this one out, as there was no instructions on how to remove a shortcut since the introduction of this launcher. Simply select the shortcut with the remote, and press the menu button, and you'll see a minus symbol next to the shortcut. Then click the OK button on the remote to remove it. Thanks again to one of my viewers. The settings menu opens up on the right side, one of the new features under Android 7. Let's have a look at the apps section. In the apps section, we have a number of core system apps that by now everyone should be familiar with. There are two apps in here that are of major interest, the DTV app, or Digital TV, and the TV Center application, the DTV app is the app that's responsible for the tuner and digital channels received from a digital antenna, sold separately. Unfortunately, where I reside in this side of the world we don't have digital signals transmitted over the airwaves, and all cable services comes with HDCP encryption, preventing me from recording anything off their service. So I will not be able to demonstrate this feature. So I'll now take a minute to set up some system and benchmarking applications, and when I return I have the rest of the review. So I've installed the apps I need, and to start the benchmarks segment, as always I like to check to see if the box is rooted. It shows that the box is not rooted, running on Android 7.1 Nougat. What this means, is that certain apps and APKs that require root access to work will not work on this box. However, lots of users have expressed that they use their TV boxes for streaming only, so root access is not an issue for them. On the other hand, there are just as much users like myself, who need their box rooted to run specialized applications for advanced functions on this box. For example, apps like mirroring apps and key mapping apps both require root access to work, so take note of this issue. If Mikul so wishes, they can release a firmware update granting root access to users. I'll now check for any updates for this box. It shows that the box is up to date, and that there are no updates at this time. I'll now test some memory read and write speeds. The results show that Decay i Pro has a RAM copy speed of 2765 megabytes per second. The internal memory has a data read speed of 45 megabytes per second. And a write speed of 15. The SD card slot has a read speed of 17 megabytes per second and a write speed of 11. These results are not the highest I seen on boxes in its class, but it is consistent compared to other benchmarks. Let's look at some Wi-Fi speed results. The results show that on the 5.8 GHz Wi-Fi band, which is represented by these results here, the box was able to maintain download and upload speeds consistent with my 30 MB internet connection. However, on the 2.4 GHz band, the results were inconsistent, and the results varied greatly with each test. Let's take a look at some system and hardware information. Under system information, it shows that the manufacturer is Amlogic, and the model is the KI Pro. It also shows that the device is KI Pro S905D, the S905D is the model of the CPU. Below here, it shows that the box comes with 2GB of RAM, and the remaining internal storage after installing the operating system and applications. Under CPU information, 
It shows that the CPU is a quad-core Cortex-A53 CPU, running up to 1.5 GHz on a 64-bit instruction set. Below here it shows that the box only has support for 32-bit ABIs, which means that the box only supports 32-bit applications. Under Display Information it shows that the GPU is the Mali 450 running up to 750 MHz, and it has a refresh rate of 60 Hz. The number of GPU cores doesn't show up in the results, all it shows is that it's a multiprocessing GPU. Under Network Information, it shows that I'm connected to my 5.8 GHz Wi-Fi band, and the signal strength, link speed and frequency is displayed below. Under Android information, it shows that the operating system is Android 7.1.1 Nougat, and it also shows that the box is not rooted. Under Thermal information, it shows that the box runs a little hot at around 55 to 60 degrees Celsius. This can increase depending on the level of activity on the box. Under Codex Information, you have a list of all the codecs installed on the box. From this list, you can identify with the H.264, HEVC, and VP90 coding. And there is no H.265 decoder in this list. And that's it for system and hardware information. I'll now show the Antuta benchmark results. The Mikul KI Pro got an Antuta score of 32,693. Now for some Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark results. And it shows that the KI Pro got 624 single core, and 1786 multi core. And the final benchmark is the Ice Storm Extreme GPU benchmark. And the box got an Ice Storm Extreme score of 3,252. And that's it for the benchmarks. I now return to the Kodi application to run some 4K video samples to see how the box handles the playback.
from the various samples the movies played, but apparently the box's USB ports read speeds are a bit slow, resulting in jerky playback of some of the 4K videos. The both jellyfish videos in this instance had difficulty playing, resulting in a negative playback experience. For my final demonstration, I always like to play an Android game using my favorite key mapping application. But due to the box not being rooted, I had to settle for a game that doesn't require key mapping functions, so I decided to play a game called Eternium, Age of Mangian Minions. This is a game that can be played 100% with a regular mouse, or using a Bluetooth Air mouse or touchpad keyboard, so let's take in some of that gameplay. Like breaking toothpicks. For treasure! Treasure! Over there! The game ran without freezing up, the audio quality is really good, but the 3D graphics was not the smoothest and of the highest quality. So in summary, the Mi Cool KI Pro is a great TV box for people that has access to free digital channel transmissions, and the extra cable tuner input can also be used with a regular antenna. It comes with the latest Android 7.1 operating system, and there are other models that has doubled the RAM and internal storage. However, the CPU and GPU hardware used in this box should have been a later model like the S912 and the Mali T820. This would have provided a better 4K quality, and a higher quality 3D gaming experience. The box should have been rooted, and a navigation bar at the bottom would have come in handy. So how do I recommend this box? Well to act as a tuner, this is one of the few TV boxes with this feature, so it would be a definite must have for people looking for a TV box to pick up digital channels via digital antenna. As for streaming, it works fine for running Kodi and other streaming services, as for playing games, not so much, and for specialized apps that require root access to work, this box will not be able to handle these applications. So viewers, I have come to the end of my review of the Mi Cool KI Pro, Android Hybrid 4K TV box, if you are interested in this box. A limited coupon code with expiry date, along with links to this product can be found in the description area below. Thanks for watching, remember to like this video if you found it informative, share it with your friends, and subscribe to this channel for more TV box stop videos.